Shambula. Boa boca que manda dobrin cara bem não nem cá talau. É na sala de cá câmera que na rádio fiz um ando e vi tinha ponga a nível não. Mas na hora no que na dia na cala quando vi mataca. Mas na hora de ti que na boa rombuca. On FBC News tonight, asylum seekers and refugees make it into Fiji. Fiji National University to spend $200 million on major facelift. And Catholic Church in Fiji reacts to news of Pope Benedict's resignation. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spade. More than 10 refugees and seven asylum seekers have sought refuge in Fiji. As Mikalonga reports, they're mostly from the Middle East and African countries. The refugees and asylum seekers came in with tourist visas. One of the conditions of seeking asylum in Fiji is for the person to be out of his or her country of origin. The current uh, seven came in uh, last year. Came in last year. And the refugees, they've been here for more than uh, four years, five years. Some came in individually, a few came in with their families. Fiji is obliged under the United Nations Convention to provide all necessities of life to refugees and asylum seekers without discrimination. The UNHCR, based in Canberra, is helping Fiji look after their welfare. Some refugees are working and their children attending school here, but the asylum seekers, although free to move around, are denied employment. When, when someone comes out and uh, seeks for asylum, that means there is a fear of returning back to their home country. So they, they, they come in from uh, war torn countries. Fiji is not in isolation from the issues of the world. However, it may consider having its immigration officers stationed in an overseas mission to vet, approve, or refuse any travel application to Fiji. There were seven. Uh, Afghanistan national, they came in through a Fiji mission in India without the knowledge of having high risk countries traveling into Fiji. These seven were allowed into Fiji and they claim asylum here. And you couldn't do anything about that? We couldn't do much. They claim protection, we have uh, an obligation to provide while they're here. Two refugees have been relocated to New Zealand while another person is waiting for his papers to come through. Mikolonga, FBC News. The Fiji National University has embarked on an ambitious plan to revamp all its campuses Fiji-wide to international standard. This is in response to expectations from students for better facilities and a more encouraging learning environment. Akasi Tatale has more. The university will spend $200 million over the next six years to upgrade 40 centres. A campus environment that is attractive uh, and there's lots of evidence that more students will come and more students will stay and staff will come if you provide the right kinds of high level facilities and that's what our aim is to provide the highest of international standard. FNU intends to offer high quality learning at international level and in order to get there the first step is getting all existing buildings up to scratch. The standards are very very good but many of the buildings that we've inherited and the campuses that we've inherited uh, need significant renovation uh, and reorganization to bring them in line with international standards. The final proposal will reach the FNU Council in July. The $200 million will likely be funded through a combination of government grants, commercial loans, aid and most importantly for students, an increase in fees. The Tishri Institute expects to teach 35,000 students this year compared to 31,000 of last year. Aksita Tale, FBC News. The Catholic Church in Fiji is watching closely the events unfolding at the Vatican. As the world comes to terms with the news that Pope Benedict has stepped down, our Archbishop-elect Father Peter Loy has described the decision as honest and humble. The Pope becomes the first pontiff to resign in nearly 600 years, saying his health is deteriorating. Pope Benedict XVI made public his decision last night saying at 85 years of age, he's too old to continue. Cardinal Joseph Redzinger became Pope in 2005 after John Paul II's death.
It takes honesty to oneself and honesty to the church uh, that, uh, that gives way for greater service in the church. Uh, because when he resigns, he's actually looking at the greater value. It's not about himself, it's what's best for the church. He knows that uh, his limitations and he's allowing room for someone else who has the capabilities. Under the Catholic Church's governing code, the canon law, the only conditions for the resignation to be valid are that it be made freely and be properly published. The Pope has this, uh, it's, uh, has this power to, or the freedom to announce his uh, resignation. Father Loy says Pope Benedict has indicated that the high office is not meant for one to hold on to power. He mentioned here the rapid changes and the, sh and the, the, the questions that have shaken the, the, the depth of, uh, of the core of Christian faith calls for uh, a vigorous leader. For Catholics in Fiji, thousands of miles from the Holy See, there are lessons to be learned. We thank God for giving us Pope Benedict because he has served the church in eight years. And uh, it's not only during his papacy, but uh, even before he's, he became Pope, he has served the church uh, in many ways. The Vatican says it expects a new Pope to be elected before Easter. Mikolonga, FBC News. Slow economic growth globally has affected the Pacific. This according to the ANZ Bank, which operates banks in 28 countries in the Asia-Pacific region, including Fiji. Devna Ryan has the details. According to the ANZ Bank, the economic crisis in Europe did have effects in the Pacific, including Fiji's economy, but things are slowly normalizing. This is recovering slowly but steadily, which is good news for us. Uh, China, India seem to have had a few lean months, but they seem to be coming out of it. So there are signs of some recovery, but overall we need to recognize that there is a bit of a slowdown which will have some impact on the neighboring economy. So clearly I can't expect how Pacific can escape that, you know. And the Reserve Bank of Fiji's January economic review shows that the global growth forecast for 2013 has been revised down from 3.6% to 3.5 percent. The RBF has forecast Fiji's economy to grow by 2.7 percent this year with marked improvements in agriculture, manufacturing and financial intermediation. The central bank also states that sectoral performances were generally subdued in the final months of 2012. The economy has so far done quite well despite the impacts of the recent cyclone. Fiji's the tourist numbers have increased. The tourism picked, has picked up significantly. I would hope we will have about 700, 800,000 tourists this year, so that should help the country. Yeah. According to the Reserve Bank, the effects of Cyclone Evan on economic growth projections are yet to be fully realized. Dev Narayan, FBC News. Police are investigating a theft at an electronic store in Cumming Street, Suva. The incident occurred at one of two Bridge Lal stores along the street. When FBC News arrived at the scene at about midday today, the police forensics officers were gathering evidence. No further details has been released by police. Coming up, Methodist Church out to end cover abuse by followers and ministers. सूरज की पहली किरण के साथ दिन की शुरुआत कीजिए सुबह का मंगल प्रभात आपको शुभ हो सुबह सुबह हो खुशियों का मेला न लोगों की परवाह न दुनिया का झमेला पंछियों का संगीत हो और मौसम अलबेला मुबारक हो आपको ये खूबसूरत सवेरा हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह छह से लेकर नौ बजे तक शामिल रहे रेडियो फिजिटो आरोप हम सफर में रविंद्र सिंह के साथ Now that's just another groove to kickstart your morning. That's right. Good morning, Fiji. It's Gold FM bringing you the classic hits to fine tune your morning. And Fila still trying to fine tune her voice. And as always, Pedali still trying to wake up. Now this is where you'll find us every morning from Monday to Friday. On Daybreak with Pedali and Fina from 6 to 9. Join, Join us. us. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. Does the Methodist Church have a cover drinking problem on its hand? 
Church elders seem to think so, with General Secretary Reverend Devita Nawandra coming out to say that it's not just followers of the faith, but men of the cloth who need to reassess their values. Apisalom Edokar reports. Cover abuse in Fiji is said to be rampant in all sections of society. The Methodist Church, however, is doing something about it, saying it's had to respond after bad decisions by some ministers and members. It has caused uh, difficulties in terms of uh, looking after the land, in terms of uh, you know, uh, doing what they should be doing. Uh, it has brought uh, what may, we may call some type of laziness uh, into the people's life. The church has now decided that it needs a formal position or policy on cover consumption by ministers and followers. The president has been very emphatic on this, that uh, drinking angona and smoking uh, should be tried to, to be stopped. Reverend Nawandra adds some valued members of the church have had to be laid to rest because of cover abuse. We have had few uh, deaths and uh, difficulties in terms of uh, you know the pastoral care that they are showing that they should be showing that, that has been lacking quite a lot because of uh, of the excessive drinking of kava the word has gone out for church members to cut down on drinking kava apisolome voka fbc news more than 1,000 students attended the University of the South Pacific 2013 orientation today at the Laudala campus. The program is designed to prepare new students for university life and help them familiarize with the surroundings. Chanel Sivan has the details. The Laudala campus will run the orientation program throughout the week for students who are attending USP for the first time. Those who turned up today were given advice on courses, using support services, as well as tour of the Suva city for those who've never been to the capital. Ruta Rolundungua came in all the way from Tavioni to help her daughter settle into the campus life. I came here with my daughter. We left Tavioni on Thursday to come and join the USP. And she's uh, going to have a uh, take a big home. In USP, and it's so first year. It's very hard to come to Tavioni. From Tavioni to Suva, it costs us about uh, 100 plus, eh? just a fair, about fair. Silosi Nasaroa will be studying accounting. For him, getting this far has been challenging. Some, uh, some students struggle to come here. Um, well, if you want to succeed here, uh, you have to ignore peer pressure. Social activities here, so you have to ignore most of them. Eh? drinking alcohol, eh? so they come to school, they have to do their best, best of their abilities. For hundreds of students, this campus and others around Fiji will be home. Young adults coming into their own, taking the responsibility. Failure or success will determine their future. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. The Environment Ministry is roping in the Fiji Navy in attempts to stop the illegal trade of substances and species that threaten Fiji. One of the main problems is the ozone depleting gases used in refrigeration and air conditioning. Epeli Tokawasa reports. It is believed that there is illegal trade of ozone depleting substances within Fiji waters, especially between fishing vessels. A new decree which came into effect last month requires that any imports of ODS gases to be restricted to 150 metric tons only. We've held meetings with the uh, fishing industries and uh, those ministries that are involved, uh, for example, the uh, Ministry of Fisheries and Forests. And uh, now that we've worked in the, the Navy offices, uh, to request them to, uh, to uh, aid the Department of Environment. Any trading in this form of substances needs approval from the Department of Environment. However, this isn't being adhered to. One thing that uh, we're still trying to figure out is how they're actually being traded off to the other foreign vessels without a permit issued by the Director of Environment. These naval officers are being briefed on environmental laws so they can detect harmful substances when inspecting ships. It is something new to the naval officers uh, in terms of uh, doing boarding, carrying out boarding out at sea and uh, things to look for and to uh, try and help the, uh, the FERCA and the Department of Environment. They'll also be on the lookout for organisms which are classified as pests 
and ban from being brought into Fiji. Epeli Tugwasa, FBC News. Silver City came alive today as cruise liner Sun Cruises birthed in the capital. It was early Valentine's Day shopping for couples while others enjoyed the scenery, sunshine and handicrafts that Fiji has to offer. The Princess Cruises' own vessel will depart for Port Denera this evening before leaving for Vanuatu early later in the week. There are over 2,000 tourists and close to 1,000 crew members on board. It's Tuesday night sports time and we join Jamie now for the very latest. Like Jackie, well tonight we have the very latest from the Fiji under 20 football camp. Also coming up we discover how two hockey parents have been juggling family and sport. Find out more after the break. जो मिल जाए वो मौत होती है और जो कभी ना मिले उसे मोहब्बत कहते हैं हम आपको बताएं मोहब्बत की बात नहीं अच्छी लगती है आप लोग क्या करते हैं इंसान की जान ले लेते हैं उनको प्यार में फंसा लेते हैं हाय मिर्ची एफएम से मैं हूं जितेंद्र शांडिल और मैं अश्मिता शामिल हो जाइएगा हमारे साथ हर सुबह हम तुम प्रोग्राम में मंडे टू फ्राइडे 6:00 एएम टू 9:00 एएम मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट ओह के बोल बोल तुम तो कभी नहीं गाने तो मांगो गो गो सने ला ना गाने तो मांगो Nimbula, why are you Mr. Ben? And Lamba! I'm going to get a little bit of 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 the Digicel Fiji Rugby 7 side is seeded second for the pool draws of the World Cup. The seedings were done after the completion of the Las Vegas 7s yesterday. New Zealand is the top seed and is followed by Fiji, South Africa, England, Samoa and Australia. The pool draws will be held on March 1st. And on to the local 7s scene. The 26th year of the Fiji Bitter Nawaka 7s tournament marks a year to promote lifting the standards of rugby from the grassroots. The two-day tournament kicks off on March 1st at Prince Charles Park. Organizers today partnered up again with the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation. Amongst the top 64 local teams, organizers hope to include the Fiji 7 squad. He talks with uh, Ali Ferretidere, as he is from Nawaka as well. Um, uh, things are looking good since the performance of the team in the Wellington in Las Vegas series, I think it will be a good uh, build-up for them because it's only three weeks away from Hong Kong Sevens and this is the only major tournament that will be held in Fiji before they go to Hong Kong Sevens. As Midnia partners, fans have been promised the best coverage from the two days of action. There will be live commentary um, on Bula FM as well as Radio Fiji 1 and um, the games will also air the following day on FBC TV. So if for some reason people can't make it down to the game, they can definitely catch uh, the Nawaka Sevens on FBC TV. The Fiji under 20 football side is heading into the final stages of preparations for the World Cup playoffs to be held here next month. And to avoid injuries, the squad members will not be released after this weekend to, fe to feature for the districts. Interesting with more. It's a loss for the districts, but the national under-20 side needs the best build-up. Hence, the national coaches have decided to fully concentrate on the playoffs, which is the best chance for Fiji to reach a World Cup. It's good because they play experience uh, games against seniors. But when you look at Nandi, Rusiate, and Gase, uh, they play in the first team, and Nandi practically have been score uh, goals in every game. If it's not one or, or the other, if not both. So... We are very satisfied, the boys from Rewa, the boys from Nabua, so they have experience. But now come in a crucial moment and we cannot afford to have uh, other things on the side. Other teams have started their build-up and the national mentor understands it will be tough from the opening whistle. A great opportunity, it's only five teams in the competition. But when you look at New Zealand, New Zealand has players in Europe, players in, in, in the college in the U.S. Plus uh, they already been played, uh, also in, in, in the internet they play... Uh, they went into the other day, and New Caledonia always goes since they're 14, 15 at all, 15 at all. They always go to to France, to, so they have a good experience at international level from early age. 
and PNG with the last time they played in the under-17 PNG uh, beat Fiji. It has been the case of so close yet so far in recent time for our young footballers. Playing at home with some of the best young talent around could just be the recipe for success and some history. In Singh, FBC Sports. The second round of the World Hockey Series League is a benchmark for Fiji. And with a day to go before Fiji hockey's men and women leave for that long-awaited trip to India, Elaine McDonald talks to two national reps who tell us just how tough it's been so far. Like peas in a pod, Catherine Thagard and Rupeni Fabiano have made huge sacrifices for that chance of a lifetime to play in India. You know, as you know, we have a daughter and um, a lot of our time preparing for this tournament has been spent at the hockey turf and away from her and it hasn't been easy. On top of that, uh, I'm lucky enough to stay home with her so I get to see in the G time. But for Ju, um, he doesn't get to spend much time with her. And when we come back from training, like she's sleeping. But I mean, it's a lot of sacrifice, yeah, but at the end of, of the day, I mean, no pain, no gain. Mm. And how has the little one adapted to all of this? In explaining to her, like, oh, daddy has training, mommy has training. So as soon as she sees us wearing this, or the red ones, she'll she know, knows. okay, are you going training? What you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so she's been coping with us as well. The tournament opener for the men is against the hosts, while the women take on Japan. We've got nothing to lose, all to gain. And that's what we're going to take into the game. Uh, underdogs, but uh, strong-hearted guys. And I feel confident in my team that will we'll give India a real hard run. It's going to be tough for us. I mean, like we do have our work cut out for us and it's not going to be easy. But uh, I think that the girls have trained hard enough and um, we should do well. We should do well when we're there. It's been a juggling affair with family, work and turf responsibilities. But having made the sacrifices already, it's all or nothing for this hockey duo. We want to compete and we know we we, we can do it. And um, FIH made this was for countries like us that will never ever get a better chance. So for me, this will be the milestone of my hockey career. So it's onwards and upwards for Fiji hockey. With a whole lot of luck in India. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. And all the best to our hockey men and women traveling to India. That's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening. <laughs> Vocational training and education for clean energy will soon be available in Fiji. The U.S. Agency for International Development with the University of the South Pacific launched a program today which teaches how to convert solar energy to charge batteries. The batteries are then used as a source of electricity in homes. This is part of the U.S. government's support for renewable energy in the Pacific. And it's time for weather now. So, Jen, afternoon walk tomorrow. Good idea, bad idea? Mm, need to think about that one, even though I usually never let a few droplets get in the way of a good workout. Looking at today's performance, fine conditions all over the group. And these afternoon showers for Suva, Savasavu and Lambasa might eventuate this evening. Brief glance at the charts, Shoba and Savasavu holding hands at 34 degrees, while the other centers were pretty even right across. So going back to your question, Jackie, I might have to take a rain check. The idea of trying to keep up with you sounds absolutely thrilling, but unfortunately, there'll be afternoon and morning showers tomorrow for Suva, Savasavu and Lambasa. After all, I really don't want to be standing here with a giant handkerchief tomorrow night. And finally, for Valentine's Day, the Outer Islands as well as the mainland can expect much of the same. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. And recapping the headlines tonight, Fiji National University to spend $200 million on major facelift at 40 campuses. Asylum seekers and refugees make it into Fiji and Catholic Church in Fiji reacts to news of Pope Benedict's resignation. Remember to take part in our poll. The question is, are some Facebook users becoming too abusive? To take part, go to www.fbc.com.fj. 
remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. Until tomorrow, good night. You can join us on The Breakfast Show every weekday from Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. till 9 a.m. right here on Today FM. That's right.